the tax authorities throughout the world have become increasingly reliant on taxpayers' assessment as means to improving administrative efficiency and effectiveness. The growing concern of tax assessment system to encourage voluntary compliance and many countries have adopted tax assessment system as a solution including self-assessment for individuals and companies. An assessment is a notice in writing issued by the tax authority for the of Malaysian case we have Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri or also known as Inland Revenue Board to the chargeable person uh, where the, whether the individual or the companies. The assessment will state the amount of income tax payable and the assessment is known as Form J where a chargeable person submits his written to the Director General for a year assessment the Director General may accept the written and raise an assessment accordingly or alternatively, the Director General may reject the written and determine the tax payable based on the best of his judgment. On the case D5000, this case can be referred to case in the textbook as stated in page 511, which is Argosy Company Limited versus Inland Revenue Commissioner 1971 for the type of assessment uh, Director General Judgment. Okay, so the taxpayer is a general medical practitioner and started his private practice in uh, 1985. It was suspected that there was an understatement of income by the taxpayer for the year of assessment 1991 to 1992. As a result, books and records of the taxpayer were seized for the years of assessment 85 or 86 to 93 or 94. After investigation, the IRD raised on the taxpayer profit tax assessment for the year of assessment 85 or 86 and additional profit tax assessments for the years of assessment 86 or 87 
1992-93 or 94, except for the years of assessment 88 or 89, which has been separately assessed on 20 March 1995, amounting to 21,863 assessable profit, which was adjusted subsequently. The court uh, was held that having heard all the evidence, the board found uh, that the taxpayer failed to prove that adjusted assessment are excessive or incorrect. When the income received is mainly in the form of cash, it is necessary for the taxpayer to have daily income sheets to satisfy the duty to keep sufficient records under Section 51C. For the findings and conclusion, Firstly, at the hearing of this appeal, the Commissioner was represented by Mr. Herbert Lee, Senior Government Counsel. The taxpayer appeared in person for the first two days and thereafter was represented by Mr. M. C. Koyasi with Mr. Victor Luke. Counsel, the Commissioner put in evidence three witness statements respectively made by Mr. Goh, Assessor, Mr. Ngan, Assessor and Nurse, the taxpayer's nurse. Mr. Ms. Ngan made a supplemental statement which was also put in evidence. Both Mr. Goh and Mr. Ngan gave evidence under oath. The taxpayer made altogether three statements which were also put in evidence. He and his wife also gave evidence under oath. Counsel for the taxpayer made a preliminary application to the effect that the board should recuse itself and that a newly constituted Board should hear the case de novo mainly on the ground that without prejudice communication made by the taxpayer had been appended to the commissioner's determination. The taxpayer's application um, was uh, rejected uh, uh, because of the two reasons, uh, which is the firstly, the commissioner's determination was the subject matter of appeal before the board. If there was uh, anything uh, inherent or uh, objectionable in the determination, it will be up to the taxpayer to raise it as ground of appeal. There is no question of hearing the novel. In any event, it has been drawn to our intention that it was in fact the taxpayer who lodged with the board the commissioner's determination without any reservation or objection in the first instance. Uh, for the second reason, uh, we have not been prejudiced by without uh, prejudice, prejudice communication and we find that no substantial wrong had been done. Mm, that's all from me. Next, we we'll discuss on the unlimited assessment. According to Section 91 Clause 3, it's provided that the Director General, where it appears to him that any form of fraud or willful default has been committed by or on behalf of any person, or any person has been negligent, in connection with or in relation to tax, may at any time an assessment in respect of that person for any year assessment for the purpose of making good any loss of tax attributable to the fraud by full defaults or negligence in question. The, however, the meaning of the fraud or rightful defaults or negligence is not defined in the Act. However, the leading class, classic definition of fraud can be found in Derry v. Pig, where the House of Lord held that fraud is proof when it is shown that a false representation has been made knowingly or without belief in its truth or recklessly without caring whether it to be true or false. In Barclays Bank Limited vs. Cole, fraud in ordinary speech means the use of false representat representation to obtain an unjust advantage. Fraud involves a false representation. While the meaning of why full defaults can be approved in Wellington vs. Reynolds, in this case, the wife carried on alone the business of an innkeeper while the husband carried on an independent other business. An investigation began and revealed that the wife had substantial savings which the tax authorized view represented concealed profit of her trade. 
additional assessment were made on the husband on the footing that fraud or wife default had been committed. The husband appealed, contented that he was unaware of the uninvested of the existence of the savings and thus no form of fraud or wifeful default had been committed by him or on his behalf. The High Court held that although there was ample evidence to justify the Commissioner's finding that the money in question represented profit of the trade of the wife, there was no evidence to entitle them to conclude with wifeful default on the part of the husband. We proceed with the burden of proof. It is the duty of the tax authorities to prove that the taxpayer has committed the offence of fraud or wifeful defaults. They may use of presumption of, of guilt without the inland revenue requiring, requiring to establish wifeful defaults on the taxpayer's part is never tenable in law. And the meaning of the negligence. The taxpayer would say to be negligence in submitting the return if the tax authorities can show that, firstly, the taxpayer owes a standard duty of care to the tax authorities when filing out the information. Second, the taxpayer has broken the duty of care. And lastly, thereby caused some legally recognized damage to the tax authorities. It, must more, it's, it would be much easier for the tax authorities to establish the taxpayer has been guilty of negligence as compared to the fraud and the wifeful default. Since any one of the elements, fraud, wifeful defaults or the negligence would allow the tax authorities to collect back taxes without time bar, it would be easier for the tax authorities to establish negligence than the others. <laughs>
conducting classes on text. Um, third, sponsoring high school essay contest on text topics. And the last one, conducting seminars on public finance and economy. The last recommendation is on the tax counseling. counseling. So, um, the Malaysian Tax Administration can subscribe to the principle that every tax official is a tax counsellor. The objective of tax counselling is to assist taxpayers in matters related to tax and encourage the voluntary submissions of accurate tax returns and payments of taxes. Uh, generally, tax uh, counselling office uh, provide advice on the interpretation and application of tax laws, procedures for filing returns and application. Um, the tax uh, counselling through a formal uh, tax council can um, be introduced and then we can implement the telephone consultation service uh, that uh, can be followed by the tax uh, answer which is the automatic answer network system for electrical requests. So, um, the uh, so the tax uh, counselling has the capability to answer uh, using telephone message and and has now expanded to included uh, the internet. So that's all for the recommendation. Thank you. given by my friends regarding the types of assessment, um, the cases and also the unlimited assessment. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a brief uh, conclusion regarding uh, our topic today. So uh, here I'm going to talk about the IRB practice. Okay, um, IRB practice is Inland Revenue Board or um, also known as uh, LHDN, Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri. This is the place where the taxpayer um, pay their income tax. Okay, so uh, there are certain methods uh, that the taxpayer can can do to pay their tax. Firstly, is through the IRB agents over the counter. So um, they can they can pay their they, they can pay their tax by go by going to the LHDN and. At the, at the selected, selected counter. Alright, the second method is um, through internet banking. So uh, now um, most of the transaction we can we can settle it through the internet banking by uh, click to the to the website and then make the transaction through the internet. Okay, next is through the ATM machine where the payment of income tax can be made via auto teller machine or ATM. At the selected bank, for example, public bank, May Bank, and CIMB Bank. Okay. Um, the next way is through the telebanking, where the telebanking, um, the payment of income tax, can be made via telebanking service at May Bank Kawan Pu. The phone banking is one three hundred eight eight six six and eight eight. Okay. Um, next method is through the check deposit machine where the individ individual can pay their income tax uh, through the check uh, by going to the deposit machine and enter their check of payment and last but not least they can pay their uh, tax through the cash deposit machine where they can go to the cash deposit machine and pay it uh, using their cash so um, basically there are many ways for us to pay their tax. So, have you fulfilled your responsibility? <laughs>